Today, we are taking the Glacier Express, known as the world's most luxurious and beautiful train ride. From snow-capped mountains, glistening glaciers, to lush green valleys, and passing through the famous Lambasa Viaduct, this is going to be an epic 8-hour train ride from Zamat to San Moritz. But is it worth it? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. Good morning! We're here to take the Glacier Express this morning and I'm reaching here super early just to take some shots. So you can tell that these is the carriages. This is the one for second class, apparently. And then I'll show you how it looks like on the first class. Further onwards, this, I think this is the third last carriage and this is the first class. Okay, we continue. Ah! And then you'll see this red carriage and I believe this is either the toilet or the bar. Yes, this is the bar. So we did order food on board later for lunch, but for breakfast we don't we didn't we didn't want to buy it on the train because it can be quite expensive. So we got to go to go from Pretzel Konik and they have a good selection of pretzels and sandwiches. We got two bags of two good to go and look at the number of pretzels we got. Like I think there's like four, three or four inside. There's two more here and then I had this sausage bun that we are eating now. And all this we got for less than 10 francs, it's about 9. So it's super super worth it. And it's just right outside the train station at Zermatt. So this is a seat arrangement if you're sitting in four. And this is for two persons, but there's only two of us today, so we're taking the side seats. Which is still okay, because otherwise we will have to share with other people, which I prefer the privacy of just the two of us. So here's the baggage area, it's really quite large, so you can put all of your heavy luggages. And also here, there's a space where you can hang your coats. They have the hangers provided, and so your coats won't get crumpled. So there's two sides as well. And then the lockers, I mean the luggage area also have this shutter so nobody will come and steal your luggages. Setting off, so this is an 8 hour train ride and it starts from Zermatt and passes through different places like Brig, Andermark, Minkfu and lands in San Moritz at 4.27pm. It's going to be a long ride. There are some things to take note of. They provide you with the earbuds, then you can connect to it. And when the gong sounds, there are supposed to be some commentary about the views that you will see. And there is also a charging portal for you here. But you have to bring the right adapter, then you can charge your phone. So this train is not the same as your other trains that we were taking in Switzerland because this is meant to be like a scenic train. It means the train will actually stop and uh, not stop, sorry, it will actually slow down at some scenic points so that you can really uh, take in sceneries and also take pictures. And so far right now I can uh, we came during the month of March and the snow has kind of melted so we don't see a lot of of snow sceneries at this point, but I think when we go up to higher, there will be more snow. Let's take a look at the menu on the board. We have the cheap cost view, but I haven't decided. But this is the daily menu and um, typically this is the prices between 25 to 30 francs. Um, I would say that the meals can be quite expensive on board. So if you decide not to have lunch, you can also bring your own food if it's allowed to do so. It might be a little bit awkward because a lot of people might be getting their own food so you'll be the only one not <laughs> getting um, the lunch on board. But it's up to you, you can decide. This brochure on board. It's best not to just chuck it aside because it has quite good information. So there's one part that tells you information of all the different locations that you're going to pass by. So if you don't want to listen to the audio guide, you can just refer to this and then you get a little description and understanding of 
the history of the different places. the panoramic bar but unfortunately it's closed today but otherwise you could actually come here to get some drinks and you can also sit here just want to show you how the toilet is like so it's pretty clean there's a mirror and also you can wash your hands I think the food is just okay. It's not the best. I might have ordered something else, but this is a fixed menu, so I can't change it. Up with this, we have a slice of chocolate cake. So now we've reached the Mart, and the scenes get even more beautiful. And it's already 1 p.m. Time flies, so we have three more hours to go. Do you feel better now? Uh, yes. This was so hot that he decided to change from his sweater to t-shirt because it's super, super, super scorching. So you can wear a t-shirt during the summertime, and I trust you, you'll be fine. That is another tip for you if you want to save on the cost and you want to go on the Bolina Express or the Glacier Express but you still want to get the same route and see the same views, you can do so. You can simply book tickets for the regional trains and they will go through the same route. So in that sense, you don't necessarily have to pay for the Glacier Express. Um, you can just take the normal trains and the best part is for the normal trains, you can pull down the windows. So for photographers, that means better shots for your pictures. In terms of alternative stops, if you are not able to make it to either Samad or Samaritz in my itinerary, if you are coming from 
um, Bali, which is a friend site. I think alternative stops that you can board the Laser Express, which is from Victor or Alma. This is so that you will not miss the highest point at the Royal Pass. And if you are coming from the side of Zurich, but you don't want to go all the way to St. Moritz, an alternative stop that you can board is from Finisur, that way you will not miss the Lancer Viaduct. That whole Lanza Viaduct part is very fast. I think it's going in like 20 seconds. So you need to get ready to get your cameras and get the best angle. But by that time, everyone will be standing up. And then there will also be the gong that will let you know that this is the time that you should get ready. So we saw that there were quite a number of passengers that got off before St. Moritz at Finisur or Samadan and there's a reason that why you should do that because usually accommodations in St. Moritz can be super expensive like they can be about 200 to 300 a night or even more if you are going for a four class hotel so a good suggestion be it whether you are at Zermatt or St. Moritz is to get outside of the main towns and that way your accommodation cost will be a lot lower Okay, we finally got up after eight hours. It's nice to finally get some fresh air. Overall, I think it's a really worth it experience, especially if it's your first time in Switzerland and you have never taken like a classic train ride. You should get on the Basic Express. this hotel it has such a nice view of St. Moritz and I got it at quite a good price like below 290 francs which is considered really budget for St. Moritz because most of the hotels are even more pricey than this amount. to eat for dinner. It's a place we are going for dinner. It's called Caruso. of this LV pop-up store which is right outside the Kung Hotel in San Moritz. This is really for LV fans if you are intending to get a purchase uh, in San Moritz. This is available from December through April so definitely check out this very interesting boutique here. It's been a week after 
our trip and I thought it would be useful to just sit down and answer some of your frequently asked questions regarding the Glacier Express. First of all, is the Glacier Express worth it? I think that really depends. If you're a holder of the Swiss Travel Pass or the EU Rail Pass or the Interrail Pass, then definitely it's a yes because your base fare of the ticket is already covered by the respective passes that you have and you only would need to pay for the reservation fee which is between 39 francs during low season to 49 francs in the high season and that also means that you're saving up to 268 francs if you're traveling on a first class and that is a lot so it's a no-brainer for you to go on the Glacier Express if you hold these three passes. The next commonly asked question is on the difference between first class and second class on the Glacier Express and which is better. So in my opinion, there isn't too much of a difference between the two classes. I think the main difference would be in terms of the seat composition. So on the first class, the seats are arranged in a 2-1 configuration. So in a single row, there will be three seats and it means that you have much more space and also um, more hour space as compared to the second class because the seat is arranged in a 2-2 two, two configuration so there's four seats in a single row and it also means that if you're a couple or a solo traveler you may need to share your seats on the second class with other strangers who may be taking you know the four person seat so you might have to share it with someone else which can be a little bit awkward but on the first class you have the option to choose a single table seat between two persons so at least you have a little bit of privacy to yourself on in the same table other than that i feel that in terms of the size of the windows, the, the, the food service, everything else is pretty much the same. So it really depends if you prefer to top up that 100 francs just for the difference in seat configuration. However, if you have already purchased the first class Swiss travel pass, then by all means you should go for the first class um, place express, right? Because it is already included in the cost of your Swiss travel pass and you only need to pay the reservation fee. The next question is always about the difference between the Glacier Express and the Bernina Express and which train ride is better. I honestly feel that this will very much depend on the type of traveller you are and the number of days that you have in Switzerland. If you have a longer time in Switzerland, say like 10 to 12 days, then maybe the Glacier Express is a better option for you simply because this is a long 8 hour journey and you will need a full day just to complete this ride. And in contrast, if you're someone that is only here for a very short time, then maybe you don't want to spend your full day just on a single train ride. And then in that case, the Berliner Express might be a better option because it's also just for four hours and it's not that long. If you're traveling with children, I think that the Berliner Express would be a much more practical option because it is a shorter four hour train ride. And for children below five, I don't think they can sit that long inside the Glacier Express for eight hours. If you're talking about sceneries, I think that both train rides are also pretty much comparable. Although for the Berliner Express, you will not be passing through Zermatt. But you will still be passing through the Lambiasa Viaduct, which is along the Avila line. Both trains go by the same UNESCO heritage route. If you're chasing snow sceneries and looking out for glaciers, both rides have different views of um, different passes. So for Bernina Express, it goes through the Bernina Pass and you will go up to the highest point, which is called Ospiazzo Bernina. Whereas for the Glacier Express, you will be passing through the Oberalp Pass. Both have equally stunning snow sceneries. And the only key difference I feel for the Bernina Express is that you'll be going on the Bernina line and you will be passing through the Brusio Circular Viaduct, which is really impressive. And that is something different that you will not experience on the Glacier Express. Considering that the Bernina Express is much cheaper than the Glacier Express, I think it is the most suitable options if you are a budget conscious traveler. I have much more information in my written blog post. So if you are looking out for more information on the Glacier Express and the Bernina Express, do check out my blog post. I will link them in the description down below. And there you have it. I hope you found this video guide useful for planning your trip on the Glacier Express. Make sure you catch my other video on how to travel on Swiss public transport. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my very next one. Bye!